Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum and always a reminder for myself and abdukul aji so da'if. Miskeenu zalim wa jahalim but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence and alhamdulillah <coughs> for the immense realities of Holy Qur'an and the heart of awliyaullah that bring the treasures from the depth of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad The treasure of Allah is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And the divers of this treasure are awliya whom they dive with their love. The immensity of the ishq is pulling their soul deep into the lights and realities of the ocean of Sayyidina Muhammadun Rasulullah And by the barakah and blessings of being with them, following them, loving them, then these are the pearls and corals of that ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah And the immensity of its blessings that the knowledges they convey and the knowledges that we hear and the knowledges we try to absorb and the knowledges that we write, they change completely our destiny. That what is in our kitab of what the angels are writing of good and bad, say 99% of people that's all they have is just good and bad actions. And the angels all day long documenting these. And Allah gives us an opportunity for those whom He wants to grant His Divinely favours. That come and hear and learn from my Muhammadan haqqaiqs, from the one whom I created out of an immense love and wanting to be known through this love, sit with these ashiqeen and muhibeen and as a result when they bring out the treasures of that Divinely heart, those whom hear it and try to absorb it, write it, it changes completely their destiny. Because what the angels are documenting upon the soul, upon the book is of of immense realities. These immense realities change the angels that are documenting and ch- Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Change the course and direction of the soul that these haqqaiqs have been written upon. It's like a food and energy that changes the reality of that soul and its destiny. Because these are the honours of that soul, these are the gifts that make the soul to be noble. This is no longer something nor- normal. When somebody's soul is just all day long doing nothing and all their writing is nothing. And then Allah want to grant a gift to someone because people don't know what the gifts are. They think money is a gift. Allah loves you, He sends you money. Allah doesn't love you, He doesn't send you money, astaghfirullah. That's not the gift from Allah Allah's Divine the gifts must be something that traverse space and time. They must be of an eternal nature because money is spent here. You spend it wrong, it can cause a lot of problems here. But that which Allah want to give must be eternal. Must be so eternal that we benefit not only here 
but they benefit more in the hereafter. So when haqqaiq comes, how it comes and dresses the soul, because the servant every, every reality they hear, the soul, not the nafs, the nafs we don't know what people's nafs and what their degrees of their nafs are. Only Allah knows how naughty people are but the soul, as soon as you make your wudu, go for your sleep, your soul immediately asks the Divine the Presence, tonight I heard a haqqaiq of Prophet The soul knows the two of them are not friends. Says, this nafs I don't know what he's doing but I heard a Muhammadan haqqaiq because the soul knows who's the king. And when Allah talks about the, the camel and the she-camel and how they forbid the she-camel from water. Who's the she-camel for an eternal story? Is our soul. And who are the oppressors? Are the nafs of people whom they oppress themselves from what? They're worried about the government oppressing them but they are the biggest shaitans themselves that they oppress themselves and don't even allow their soul to be nourished from the fountains of Allah This is the biggest zulamat, the one whom oppresses himself. Before you can go protest on the street, this guy's a crook, this guy's a crook. It's not acceptable in tariqah, why? Because nobody has finished their own oppression. Can you complain of an oppressor when you're <laughs> the bigger one? No. That's why if you fixed all of your internal oppression, why would you go out on the street to protest? You're content with what Allah has given but they don't want to fix themselves, they want to fix everybody else so it's forbidden. Until they realize who knows himself will know his Lord, they look to themselves and say that what is the greatest oppression and what was the naqatullah? The she camel of Allah in which Allah when you read the surah of Qur'an that describes what they were torturing the, the, the she camel and forbidding it access to water and in the, in the end they killed it. It's all a similitude into our soul. I sent you something precious from paradise, you put it into your physical body and you didn't allow it to take from my fountains of paradise. What is this creature of yours supposed to be eating? Your hamburger doesn't suffice for it. Your jogging absolutely doesn't do anything to it. The medicines you take don't have anything to do with it, harms it. What did you do with the soul that I gave to you this precious gift from paradise? And our duty on this earth was to feed it. And the only food it takes is reality. Not fake news, it doesn't know anything to do with that. Conspiracies and com political conspiracies and this one conspiring. Some people watch the Pakistani news for hours, day and day, night. Why? It has absolutely no value to your soul. This one said, that one said, he's in jail, he's out of jail, the other one's going into jail. You think the soul takes a, even a drop of that reality? Nothing. You could be watching a game show for all they care, it's not going to benefit your soul at all. And that's why Prophet told his nation, you're responsible for the life and time Allah gave to you. Allah will call you to account that what did you do with your soul, what did you do with the time that I gave to you? A portion of your time you made for rizq, a portion of your time you went for family but what time did you give for your soul in which to nourish your soul? It is a camel that can go very long but are you trying to kill it? The fact that it goes long doesn't mean that you abuse it. So Allah came into our lives and said, your soul, is, its knowledge is its food. Haqqaiqs and realities are its food. As soon as it takes from a reality, 
it's nourished and empowered. It actually then begins to transform because now it's not getting regular food, it's getting superfoods. As soon as it receives Muhammadan haqqaiqs, it's not the knowledge of any level of paradise, it's beyond all those levels. What happens when now your soul is custodian of immense haqqaiqs of the heavens? Think in dunya, somebody comes from the NSA and say, here are all the top crypto codes. Here's the code to all banking, here's the code to all, <laughs> all of these different things. What do you think he would be on this earth? Either heavily guarded or killed. Because so why do you have those codes? So then they came and gave it to me. Well then you'd be a very powerful person on this earth. And this is for the filthiness of dunya. Imagine to the soul that receiving the realities of the king of all creation. We, s we read in the knot, the one whom Allah created all creation and that wears the taj and the crown of its authority and that any letter in its reality that is given grants an honour to the soul it never had. Dressing it, blessing it, changing all of its rizq and all of its sustenance. Just like in dunya, oh you have the key to all banking codes? Well sure then imagine all the accounts you have access to. From every person's account you can take some coins because you have the key to everything. Dunya shows you, imagine then akhirah where Allah is, is depositing upon the souls of people whom hear, whom write and, and take a life of realities, their soul completely transforms. The angels that are not documenting are too heavy for those angels, a different race, a different type of angel has to come <clears throat> that is more, more authorized. The one who was authorized just to write your good and bad is a different authority, different rank and different power. As soon as the Muhammadan haqqaiqs come upon the soul, the angels even change whom write for you. Because now these are very noble scribes and they're writing immense realities and haqqaiqs of Sayyidina Muhammad What then is the weight of that kitab now on the servant? We described if there was for dunya what would happen, now imagine for akhirah. That they write, they transcribe, they have these realities, means all the heavens are watching that servant. That upon this earth is a servant carrying and is a custodian of Muhammadan haqqaiqs, the entourage that guards them, the angels who send provision for them. All of that is a dress and a blessing and that's why Prophet asked for us, seek knowledge. Not the knowledge they teach you in universities, they teach you to come against the Creator but the knowledge of haqqaiqs and realities, that their knowledge encompasses all uloom and knowledges. It's the purified knowledges of the heaven, this grants us honour, this grants us rizq, this grants us protection, this grants us health, this grants every type of authority, every type of reality is based on the uloom and the knowledges. The one whom doesn't seek the knowledges then become like bankrupt from heavenly realities. They came to the earth and what did they achieve? Nothing in comparison to what Allah wanted for us. When they come and say, give to your soul its nourishment, its realities, its haqqaiqs. And then imagine the one whom also understood then now tafakkur and contemplation. That they're turning that knowledge into its reality with power. That they take a knowledge that they hear they meditate, the knowledge becomes real by qudra. Allah begins to open their heart, their knowledge becomes certainty. <coughs> <coughs> <coughs>
kids ask, how do you know that? Because it's certainty, not philosophy. So how do you know that's true? Because I saw it. The knowledge they acquire is a knowledge in which through their training they saw it. It's certain. If their knowledge and certainty mix, it became a haqqaiq and reality for them. Their knowledges are their reality. They live within that reality. They're dressed by that reality, blessed by that reality. This becomes the, the goal of our life to seek out these Divinely realities and Divinely knowledges to grant the soul what Allah wanted for it when it came to this earth. That don't be someone whom oppresses their soul, gives to it something of no value. Some people feed their soul garbage, worse than not feeding, right? So when we see our soul is, is something Divine then Allah give to it something of an eternal reality. Then imagine taking the garbage information from dunya and keep giving that to the soul. So what I'm going to do with this? You're making me sick. They literally can become sickened from what they hear and what they absorb of gossip, backbiting, news and worthless information, even worthless religious speech. They're all arguing and fighting and you think this is knowledge, no oh, it's garbage, it means nothing in Allah We said before when alam is speaking bad and talking and fighting with another person that, that knowledge becomes contaminated. So don't give the camel anything of a garbage to eat but give to it from Divine realities, Divine blessings so that what it grows in its power. If that soul becomes powerful, it gives power to you and your physicality. It's your best friend to have. It's the best thing that you can have in life. If the soul is powerful and the soul is nourished by Allah's command and by Allah's realities, that when you ask, the dua will be accepted. When you're in need of, the du'a will be accepted. How? From the power of your own soul that it took from realities, it did its ibadah, it did its energy practices and realities, the soul became very powerful. Like Fulakul Mashkhum loaded. What you ask from Allah the soul begins to ask. And no doubt Allah to accept and the nazar of Prophet to be upon the servant. We pray that Allah give us the, the depth of our understanding for these associations, these realities and love for Sayyidina Muhammad that in any way we look our blessings come from this love and this ishq and that the high status and high rank in Divinely Presence is based on the ishq and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and so easy to obtain, so easy to obtain. Some people say, Shaykh make it complicated, no the knowledges are complicated because they know only kindergarten stuff. But easy to obtain, your tasbih is your buraq, you make duru sharif, sit, connect your heart, what's hard about that? But the knowledges, yes very advanced, they can't repeat it, they can't speak even of it. But that's not the complicated part. The, the way to this reality is very simple, very easy. They make their duru, the sharif, they connect their heart and the rest is just light. The rest is just an uplifting light of immense realities and we find it in all the duru, the sharif. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon. Wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, 
our water well give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.